Hi, my name's Justin. I'm with JMAX Plumbing. We're here at a project that we recently completed, so I'm going to walk you guys through and show you some of the plumbing features that we have here. On this pool, we have uh, a skimmer and water leveler. Um, this is the primary skimmer. This project has two. That is a Venturi skimmer, but it's plumbed without the Venturi option, which you can do. That's a water leveler canister. That's what maintains the water level in the pool. Walking over here, we have a second skimmer. In this pool, we wanted to position a second skimmer in the Baja just because this family is going to spend a lot of time in here and we wanted to make sure that this area stayed clear. Um, the surface area of the pool didn't, didn't necessarily call for a second skimmer, but we wanted to make sure we got it. You can see inside the Baja here, we got some things going on. The, this family has young children. This linear bar right here is a Paramount Air Bar. This is connected to a blower at the equipment. Once interior is done, we come and drill it out and it'll, it'll create a plume of air um, so the kids can play in it. There's no, nothing that sticks up. It's just air that rises to the surface. Pretty cool feature for kids. This is an LED bubbler. So this is a water plume that has a light integrated into it. At night, it looks really cool. The, the light flows up the plume, lights the area up, creates a pretty cool uh, feature for the kids also to play in, something cool to listen to and look at. Over here in the wall, this is a surface return. Um, that'll be finished with an eyeball fitting. It's positioned kind of opposite the skimmer to get any debris that gets trapped in this corner and then blow it out. That's a, that's a micro bright light, so that's just going to put a, a light out here so as they're getting in and out they can see the, the step. Over here in this corner, this is another return. So this is going to direct water flow out back towards that skimmer that's in the corner. These, these are main drains. These are connected to the skimmer. Um, they're not separate main drain here because we don't have in floor it ties directly into the skimmer. We got a vacuum here and a return. Uh, again, this return is if you come around the corner, it's the first opportunity we had to get surface stimulation moving stuff this way. It'll get finished with an eyeball and we'll direct it at sort of a 45 degree angle. And then last in this corner, we have another return. This return is pushing debris out of this corner, giving this skimmer an opportunity. So if you look at the plumbing system in a hole, you have returns in all the corners that are pushing stuff toward this skimmer and that skimmer servicing that one wall that doesn't have, it could potentially have a dead spot. This is a light, this is the balance line for the water leveler. It's just how the water gets into the can and it, it brings water in. I don't know if you can see here, but these brass flush uh, deck jets are in the deck. These create an arch of water. So that's their water feature here. They got the plume and air bar, and then they have these deck jets uh, that they can turn up or down. And uh, th those are a pretty nice looking one, the, the brass it's by A&A. &A. And if you want, we can walk up and look at the equipment. You can kind of see what, what it looks like on the business end of things. Okay, so this is the equipment set for that pool. I'll kind of run you through everything that's going on here. Everything in the front of the pump is the suction side. So this three-way is the two skimmers, skimmers A and B, and this is the dedicated vacuum port. Remember the main drain is tied to primary skimmer, so the only way you can get uh, suction there would be by turning this skimmer on and then adjusting your satellite valve in the skimmer to direct some flow to the floor. We don't necessarily need that here because we have a vacuum, but you got skimmer, skimmer, vacuum. Goes into the pump, pumps out, this is an optional drain valve. Since we have a cartridge filter here, there's no way to backwash water out if they had a heavy rain. So in the case that they needed to drain down some of the water, adjust their CYA level, whatever it be, they could connect a hose here with the pump running, turn this on, drain off as much water as they want. Uh, water flows into the filter, it's cleaned, comes out. This first valve, it, it's water features on your right, pool returns on your left. This is a spacer cell for a salt cell. This particular job is going to be salt. So at startup, after 30 days when they add salt, they'll pull this spacer out and install the actual cell. This first line right here, this is the bubbler that's in the Baja. And then we have three deck jet lines right here. 
we valve them independently so that they can control flow. If they want one to be greater, one to be less, if they want to direct them all to one corner, they have complete control over them individually. One real important thing, if you're installing valves like this, you want to leave enough room above and below to service these valves if you have to cut them out later. If you were to butt this valve all the way up, you'd have to replumb the whole manifold when you go to change them. Another thing, if you want your plumbing to look extra clean, you want all the valves at the same height. Um, you want to make sure that when you're installing them, even if there's, for example, this fitting that drops down, you want to measure those out so your handles line up. Just something that kind of help you make it look extra clean. The other thing, this has all been painted to protect it from UV. Um, we pull all the handles off. These are Spears Deluxe Valves. These handles pull right off. You paint it, and then you can put your handle right back on. Gives the customer a clear identification of what is a control surface and what needs to be touched. So a couple of the, the fittings used here, just so you can get an idea. This is a CPDC nipple. When we make a connection to this pump, if you're not going to use a union, you can use a CPVC nipple. This nipple uh, won't shrink or expand as this pump cycles hot to cold, so you're going to want to use that on an inlet or an outlet. This is a coupling where we make a transition from CPVC to PVC. This is painted PVC. This is a 90 degree elbow. This is a hard 90, a pressure 90. Um, some people will use a sweep in California, for example. This is an example of just a pressure 90. We've labeled this one to give a customer an indication of flow. That's showing you that flow is going in. We've also labeled other things on here so that the startup text, pull tech customer will know what the lines are. Uh, same thing on the return side. This is a three-way valve. So this valve, as you open one port, another port closes. You use that when you're, when you're uh, throttling between two positions. This is a ball valve. Inside the heart of this is a ball that when this is parallel to the pipe run, the ball has a hole that is now allowing water to flow through the ball. When you close it, the ball turns. Now the water stops at the top of the ball. So ball valve, you use these mostly for anything that you want to be able to control flow to a certain amount. If you wanted to turn this halfway off, you could close the ball partially, you could close it all the way, or you could open it all the way. Okay, so you can see here that we got plumbing of some varying sizes. And the reason why is everything has a different demand here. So what we have here, this is a two inch plumbing line. Two inch can support 50 gallons a minute on the suction side of your pump. And then once you've reached the return side, it can support 90 gallons a minute. So you'll see here as you drop in, we're in two inch, passes through this 90, 45, 90 into your filter, comes back out. We got a couple different sizes over here. We got two inch plumbing on the main return loop. So this feeds two inch to the pool and then loops the entire pool an inch and a half. That feeds all the surface returns. This is an inch and a half line that's feeding out to a bubbler. Uh, that bubbler had a demand lower than what we needed from two inch. So we reduced it to inch and a half. It's still oversized for our demand. We need about 25 gallons a minute at that bubbler. Um, inch and a half line will get us somewhere in the neighborhood of 60, depending on the manufacturer. These deck jets, which need about 10 gallons a minute, we've sized them at three quarter inch lines, which is more than capable of delivering 10 gallons a minute. Um, all of these T's, these are reducer T's, they reduce from two inch to three quarter in one step, uh, which steps us down to the three quarter valves, and then we carry three quarter all the way out to the deck jet.